Um, so can we? Do we need anything up on the screen? Okay, we're good. So, Charity and Ron, do you both want to come up? Or? Sure. Okay. Do you have any hard questions for me? Ryan will help. So, you know, I show up. Do you want to put it? You don't want to do it. No, I wrote you a memo, but I'm going to summarize it and read it at your leisure. So I think when we left um, here last week or week before, um, we had asked the Attorney General's office to get the stakeholders together and have a discussion on 595 and some of the um, uh, proposal that, that your office had that presented on um, modeling in Illinois law. And so I guess we want to find out what what that meeting brought and, and where we go from here. Okay. For the record, I am Charity Clark, Chief of Staff to the Vermont Attorney General, and with me is Ryan Krieger, an Assistant Attorney General and our subject matter expert on data privacy issues, as you know. Um, so we did have a meeting you requested at our offices on Wednesday. We invited everyone we could think of who would be interested in, in coming and encourage them to spread the word to others who might be interested. I have submitted a memo to the committee that lists all of the people who we believe were there. Um, some folks were on the phone and we struggled a little bit to hear um, some of their affiliations, but we, we did our best and included a list. We also invited Orca Media, who's our local cable access channel, to come and film the meeting. And they did, which was wonderful. They sent me a link. I've included the link in the memo so that you can actually view the meeting if you want um, to hear what folks had to say. What we heard um, were various opinions, but a common theme had de developed um, among the business community, and that is that this um, concept of uh, trying to pass a BIPA uh, Biometric Information Privacy Act bill um, before the end of crossover was um, ambitious, but didn't allow for enough um, time for uh, meaningful input from all the stakeholders, which um, is a fair and reasonable um, perspective, given how quickly things were moving. And although not everyone felt the same way, and we certainly feel there is some urgency to the issue, which I can speak to in a moment. Um, we agreed with that perspective, and so our proposal is that the Attorney General's office um, study the issue over the summer and hold public meetings similar to those we held in 2018, which um, led up to S-110, which the governor recently signed. So we would envision public meetings in which stakeholders were invited to um, provide comments. The public would be invited. Um, we would have a variety of locations. And also, at least one of those would be you know, towards the end of the work day for most folks so that regular people wouldn't have to leave work to come. It wouldn't just be you know, those of us who make our living um, doing policy and, and these kinds of issues. Um, so that is essentially what our proposal is and kind of summarizes the memo, other than I did want to read the um, scope of what we would propose this, um, this study include. So it would include um, appropriate protections on biometric data, including facial recognition, which was the topic of H595. Um, second, whether Vermont should adopt all or parts of the California Consumer Privacy Act, the CCPA. And three, consumer protections that better address the privacy concerns of Vermonters. We would also want to confer with the Secretary of State's office regarding the inventory that they are working on or will be working on under S-110, which I don't think has an act number yet, so I'm just calling it S-110, um, which uh, is an inventory of the sale of Vermonters data that the state of Vermont does. So we would want to make sure that they were part of the conversation and we got an update from them on, on that topic. So that's the, the summary of what we would um, think a good scope would be for the study over the summer. Um, I do also want to make an announcement that relates to this topic. This morning, the Attorney General's office filed a lawsuit against Clearview AI in Chittenden Superior Court for violations of the Consumer Protection Act and the Data Privacy Act. This, I believe, is the first lawsuit that's been filed under the Data Privacy Act on the data, the data Broker Act, excuse me, um, which, of course, is a very new uh, new law that we can thank this committee for being an integral part in, in passing. Um, 
So we, uh, the Attorney General made that announcement at 10. We posted a press release on our website that's there right now. There's a link on the press release to the complaint, as well as a motion for preliminary injunction, which we also um, filed this morning, and a cease and desist letter that we had sent Clearview last week, asking them to stop collecting and storing the biometric um, data of Vermonters, and they declined to do that, so today we sued them. The motion for preliminary injunction asks the court to enjoin uh, Clearview from collecting and storing the facial recognition, the photo, uh, the photos of Vermonters. So we will have to see how that plays out. But um, if this is a topic that you are interested in, or want to know more about, it's on our website under the press release section. Where are uh, is clear? Where are they getting this information? Are they getting uh, photographs of uh, people's driver's license? I mean, how are they getting it? Ryan can he knows he's better at the at the technology of it. But my understanding is they're just getting it from the internet. And the sites that they visited include Facebook, Google, Venmo. Um, you know, places where people put photos. And what if any intention do they have? What is their intention? They're, I mean, my understanding is they're intending to make money. So they collect these and then they sell the information to um, businesses, to private individuals, to law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Yep. There ought to be a law. <laughs> Thank you, James on Ryan. Lawn. I, I, did, uh, on my lawn. I was curious about um, sort of the pros and cons of waiting versus, I mean, are, are the implications of waiting worse than getting it wrong the first time? Do you know what I mean? Um, uh, what if we don't take action now? Um, but is it is it because they will continue to build this database, and um, and if they have another year, they can make quite a bit of progress on that. So. I mean, we, we definitely share your the conundrum. It's it's uh, it's tricky. You know, we don't have time to hear from everyone, and you know, keep in mind something that we heard, which you know resonated with us certainly. Um, the folks in the room at the meeting last week, they were representing in some cases other people or other businesses, and having to go to those folks and say, hey, what do we think about this? You know, we weren't allowing them time to do a process even amongst themselves, um, and, and we heard that loud and clear, um, particularly from the folks locally here in Vermont, the Vermont Tech Alliance. And, um, you know, it's it's tricky. I, I would say that um, having more time would allow us to not just look at BIPA, but also some other possible options that we think are um, <clears throat> worth looking at at this time to make sure that Vermont's choosing the right path for um, data privacy. And keep in mind, I mean, there is a tension between the pace of technology and the pace of policymaking and lawmaking. And we, we're really lucky in Vermont. We, we're very nimble here. In a lot of places, it doesn't work so well. And I think one of the reasons why it works well is because we're very collaborative and respectful. And I think the process that we're proposing um, really keeps with that spirit that we have in Vermont. And I, I think it works well. But yes, we, we agree there's certainly some, some urgency given that Clearview is continuing to do what they've been doing that we feel is in violating uh, Vermont law. And, and, yeah. oh, and so having that, um, so you, you don't feel like if we were able to get something out, you know, this week, even if it wasn't perfect, you would still have the Senate side for the next uh, through May to work on it as well, and that then that doesn't feel like enough time either. It it did to me, and that and I okay. said almost the exact same sentence when we had our meeting last week, and it was it was not. Um, that was not, how do I say this, it wasn't, wasn't well, well, well received. Um, people didn't share my optimism about that. <laughs> about the Senate. <laughs> uh, uh, just a question about Clearview. You said that uh, the Attorney General's office has sued them for violation of consumer protection. Um, I'm trying to think, is it currently prohibited to collect biometric data? I don't see that it is in statute. <clears throat> so we have this. Um, our Consumer Protection Act is it's very broad, it's very flexible, it's very nimble. So yes, they can't do what, what they're doing under the Consumer Protect because of the Consumer Protection Act. Our two things. One, it helps businesses know what they can and can't do if we're more specific. So we do have laws and rules that provide a lot of specificity. 
um, on what the Consumer Protection Act is saying, for example, and in other areas like the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act. We, we get really specific to help businesses. Secondly, when, when we go to court, when Ryan and I are in court and we're approving up um, something under the Consumer Protection Act. So say I'm improving, um, you know, deception. There's different elements. It's the consumer. Um, they relied mm -hmm. on it. The reliance was material. The misrepresentation was there. So we have to prove all these different things. That's harder than, say, a case I recently had where someone violated the, um, the requirement that telemarketers mm -hmm. register. I, I literally just called the Secretary of State and said, did they register? No. I won my case. I mean, it was literally that easy. So when we get specific, sometimes it... It's a little clearer for everyone. It's clearer for the, the business. It's clearer for us. It's clearer for the court to interpret. Um, so do you have something to add? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say you'd ask specifically about collection of biometrics. And the, the core of our argument is that it is the combination of collecting information on a mass scale through <laughs> screen scraping, OK? Basically just going on the internet and just grabbing all the information you can and then applying biometric and facial recognition to that screen scrape data. By the nature of how they collected it, no one knew it was being collected. They didn't have the option to consent or opt out. So it was kind of the combination of the two things that we are alleging is unfair, violates public policy, is unscrupulous and immoral. Um, and so that, that's kind of the, the core of our, you know, not just the biometrics, not just the screen scraping. It's really kind of the combination of the two. But these are databases which are open to the public, correct? From which they are scraping it? Mm -hmm. So this is going to be one of the big arguments that comes up in court. Our position is that when you post a photograph to Facebook, you are granting Facebook a license to share that photograph in certain ways. You are doing it with the expectation that other people who go on Facebook would look at your photo through Facebook. You're doing it with the expectation that if you want to change your photo from public back to private, you can do that. These are all options you have. You are not doing it with the expectation that someone is going to then come onto Facebook and just collect all the photographs with no opt-out, no, no opportunity to change, and then again, apply facial recognition to them and sell that information so that you can be identified in any context. Be an interesting case. We, we believe it will be, yes, yes. Privacy issue is at the heart of this and, and, and uh, a violation of constitutional right to privacy by a business. We are arguing that there is this constitutional right to privacy within the penumbra of a number of other rights, yes. Yes. So is it fair to say that even without passing anything this year, the, the Attorney General's office, uh, your hands aren't tied, that you're not stuck in the water, that you still can go after bad actors? Yes, we have. We already have statutes, um, and we are certainly using those statutes in this case. Um, two of them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's that's fair. So I think it's, it's probably prudent that we do our best to take our time and put uh, put something in place in Vermont that fits us well. Mm -hmm. and that's how we've approached this in the past. And I think we're better off. Doing the same thing here again. So, how does the committee feel about the recommendation from the Attorney General's office? I think probably what we could do is write a letter, probably from my uh, talk with uh, the Chair of Senate Economic Development, and probably we could write a letter from the Chairs and Vice Chairs, just asking you to convene over the summer and then bring us uh, bring us a recommendation for legislation back on how we deal with this next year, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're recommending a study. Yes. Yeah. And, and your stakeholders be the kind of broad group you had for the, um, the school privacy group? It's, it's really a selected, self-selected group. So it's anyone who would like to come. It's a public hearing. It's not a named group. Um, we do try to spread the word um, as best we can. We have a list of folks. Um, if you know anyone is interested, we, they're included. We try to 
publicize the event to do what we can to get people there. Lovely, thank you. Sorry. Um, I appreciate the DAD's office recommendation, and, and I, I think it makes sense, but I also, I wish that, or I hope, and obviously up to the discretion of the chair, that we could put in a lot of time to, to try to do this. I think you had pointed out that we are a nimble state and that we can address these things quickly. Um, but I, I see this as a major issue right now, and I think it will continue to grow, and I think that we have a responsibility to put some time into this to try to figure it out. Um, and so that's my personal thought about it, is I, I would like us, you know, we're going to have some late nights this week, I know, already trying to get the crossover, and, and I, am, I, I do have faith in the Senate that they can do good work as well. Um, but I, uh, I personally would like to see us try to see what we could at least get done, even if we don't get something out by the end of this week. Um, question about the data collection. Are they limiting it to adults or are they uh, going after children as well? They're going after children and, and that's part of you know why we got where we are. And, and in fact, this was one of the precipitating events. They filed with our data broker registry and in it we asked, do you collect information of minors? And they said, yes, we do. And so that actually was part, part of our function. And fortunately, we had the broker registry that gave us that additional information. That's really creepy on the record. <laughs> I, I forgot to mention that um, we, Ryan and I, were sorry that we couldn't tell you this information that we were planning to sue Clearview when we were here two weeks ago. Um, and I also wanted to note that we did not decide to sue Clearview after we were invited to <laughs> testify in 595. We had been um, thinking and talking about it for uh, a few weeks since we learned that when they registered, they clicked the, yeah, we collect the data of children box. But, uh, because you're going to have case law uh, as a result of the case that you're bringing, unless there's a settlement outside of court or um, length of time. If you had to say, and it's going to take a, mm, three years, six months, two months, it all depends on how the strength well, we, of the case is. But. We filed a motion for preliminary injunction, so that hastens some of the guidance from from the court. Um, but it's, it really varies, and it varies on um, a lot of factors. I don't know if you have any more clarity than I have. It's, it's not going to be three months. I mean, the preliminary injunction will be within three months, but it, it, it's, a it's year? It's very hard to say what the Nine time months. frame would be. I think that when we sued a patent troll a few years ago in mm -hmm. MPHA, we thought that would move a lot faster than it did. So it's, it's very hard to, to guess. You know. I only ask because it, the, the outcome or the substance of that would inform the discussions between now and the next legislative session. We certainly. will be back here before the case, unless it settles. There definitely would not resolve in court, I would imagine, before next session. We, we may have a decision on the record, but we may not. This bill, 595, just talks about that the facial recognition technology being used that they have to have a person that they're collecting. Wouldn't that be like a, a something that would, could be, and you have to talk me through the legal process of this. Uh, but the case that you're, you know, clear you may take some time. I, I don't know. We, we don't know. But this could, in effect, at least force, force companies to let people know that they're collecting it and give people the option to say, that still doesn't answer the question, perhaps, that they're collecting it anyway or using it. Ryan's fine. Are you fighting the bill? Yeah. Hey, it's been a while since I've read I, it. I think, well, I mean, as, as the language currently stands in the bill, it says, a business shall provide notice to a consumer that it uses facial recognition technology in its physical location or through an electronic interface. So I, I would imagine that means that when you walk into a business, there would be a sign. When you log on to their website, they would disclose that they do that. Um, but. Uh, Clearview did not have any interaction with the people whose information it was right. collecting. And they do on their website very clearly. They say they use facial recognition technology. So I don't know that that would, you know, without, without some sort of a and you must, uh, I don't know that that would have, would have a, you know, stopped this practice. Fair. Yeah. Can I go back to the question um, about case law in terms of you had cited Illinois before and as an example. Uh, what is the body of case law that exists now, or what's going on there in terms of uh, determination of the, the constitutionality, or just the findings of the courts? 
Well, I mean, it is really interesting. Um, Clearview has been sued in Illinois under their BIPA, um, and I can let Ryan speak. He's, he's been crunching out the complaints, so he knows more of the details than I do. I mean, those those complaints, they're class action complaints. Uh, the, the AG has not sued them. Uh, so those are, in fact, I'm not sure their BIPA has an AG. I think it's only class actions or private right of action. Um, those are very, very early days. Those cases, but there have been a number of BIPA lawsuits filed all over against a number of large tech companies. And they, there was a lot of case law that actually came out that said that the injury that was being alleged was unconstitutional. And then the Illinois Supreme Court weighed in January 2019 and said, no, no, it is constitutional, which actually kind of undid a lot of the law that had come up before. So there are still, there's a lot of case law on there, but it's still being developed, I would say. But th there definitely is the people who are saying, we think that this violates BIPA because they're suing under BIPA. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, Rereading my notes, uh, um, that uh, Texas, Illinois, Washington have already. Last time you spoke to us, they've adopted biometric information privacy acts similar to this. So, um, and how some of them are up to 12 years old. Illinois is Illinois is years. up to 12 years old. So I guess I'm. Are we trying? How different is our legislation from what, what they have done? What we were proposing is we we like Illinois, so we would start with Illinois, and then we would put the Vermont touch on it. So, for example, we it's 12 years old. I'm sure they've learned a lot. We would try to you know make those changes that are an, you know an upgrade or oh this didn't quite work well. Why don't we do this instead? Um, so we would try to, you know, make those adjustments and hear feedback from all the folks who, you know, in Illinois have been working with this law and I'm sure could give us some, some tips on things they would do differently and that kind of thing. Clearview was on our radar. You know, we, we read uh -huh. the articles just, you know, as I'm, well, many, many of us did. But um, yeah, we're, we're really unique. We have this we have this registry. Well, now California has one too, but it gave us helpful information that, that signaled to us, well, this is something worth looking into. This doesn't sound right. Yeah, and I, and I, would, I would say, you know, we're alleging what we're alleging. We are taking issue with the collection of minors, but what we like does go beyond just collection of minors. And I think what I what I should clearly say is we saw that that caused us to do a lot more research into them, and a lot of other things turned up. For example, two weeks ago they had a data breach. Right. So you know, so we started paying a lot more attention at that point and realized that there was a lot of things problematic about the business model. Oh, and I should also just note, we did invite Michael Lee, who testified two weeks ago and who raised this um, for the, the committee, and um, he wasn't able to be there, but he is involved with the Vermont Tech Alliance, and they were there, so I just wanted to mention that we haven't forgotten about Mr. Lee. <laughs> Thank you very much.